Invincible is a very popular show, but there's one character that made people really mad. I'm not going to get too heavy into it since honestly I've seen like a whole bunch of good essays on it, uh, but I will briefly summarize. Basically, Amber is the main character's girlfriend. Main character is a superhero who is struggling to maintain a life balance uh, and he keeps flaking on her. She's understandably pissed, but when it comes to their inevitable breakup, she says that she knew that he was a superhero the whole time, which as a subversion is good. Like, oh, she knew the whole time? Wow, what a twist, what's going on here? But the problem is it also recontextualizes a lot of previous scenes from she was angry for him flaking for no reason, pretty understandable, to she was angry that she didn't get time she was promised because he was off saving lives, which to be fair, isn't what she signed up for, but it is way more understandable. And since she apparently knew the whole time, she knew after that point what the relationship was gonna be like and it wasn't gonna change, so like, why are you angry? <laughs> Just fucking leave. The reason you're given for this is that she was actually angry that he lied about who he was and didn't trust her with his secret identity, which seems really entitled to most people because it's a like four, six month relationship or whatever and apparently she felt entitled to sensitive information that spread could radically change his life and like she wanted this at the start of the relationship. Furthermore, in previous scenes it's confusing to think she was lying about why she was angry when she can just confront him on it then and there. The, the whole thing just kind of feels like she was written to be genuinely unaware of the superhero thing until this scene was written and then someone was like, oh I got an idea not really thinking about how it changes everything. I mean, she even says, who was that about Invincible when apparently she already knows. I do a lot of uh, rewrite type content and the backlash to Amber from Invincible is very similar to the problems I addressed in The Last Jedi rewrite. The problem very much seems like the same case of uh, a choice was made to subvert expectations without much consideration of what engagements were lost in the process. In this case, the consequence of this subversion is it destroys her character investment, making her really disliked. So this is going to be the same kind of rewrite. I'm going to try and keep the subversion that Amber knew Mark was invincible the whole time, but I'm going to change the logic so her character feels more reasonable and less hateable. Which, fuck me, for the record, this is really hard, because the main thing I have to solve is I have to find a way for her to have a problem in their relationship, but then find a good reason to not communicate it at all. But. I think I found a clever plot twist that's, at the very least, going to make her choice seem more understandable. So look forward to that. So how do we fix this while keeping the subversion that Amber knew about Mark intact? Firstly, let's add a fun little mystery scene for the setup of the plot twist. Uh, we're adding this scene sometime after the Guardians of the Globe get massacred and also directly after a scene where Mark and Amber go on a date. I'm also going to add to this Amber, especially on this date, that she should seem, uh, let's say distant. Uh, just keep that in mind. Anyway, we cut the date scene to later in the day and we see Amber alone in a random field somewhere. She has a far off look in her eye, ominous, maybe even creepy. There's a pile of books in front of her. She throws the last one on the pile and gets out a match, lights it and throws it on the pile. As we watch the books catch fire, we zoom in to see what they are. They're comic books, superhero comic books. And she watches the pile burn. Hopefully after seeing the Omni-Man twist in episode 1, this is going to make you be like, is she evil? Is she a villain like Omni-Man 2? What does she have against Mark? Hopefully it's a good little mystery uh, to think about before we actually get to the actual Amber moment that we want to change. Speaking of mystery, why did I make this fucking shirt? It's horrifying. Super Dad puts you on the right tracks. Now available in a variety of flavors like shirt, hoodie, and mug. Bye now, regret later. So let's set that scene. Mark has already flaked on Amber a bunch of times now with progressively sillier excuses. It's the day after the cyborg incident where he ran off to find help, so he could change clothes and fight as invincible, only to come back as Mark and get chewed up and dumped by Amber for abandoning her. We get the same scene as before, uh, where he flies into her window as invincible as a last ditch effort to get her back, and just like before she has no reaction. She says she figured out he was a superhero weeks ago. But Mark asks, wait then why did you pretend about not being there? Why are we even fighting right now? And she says, because I was scared about your identity getting leaked. You are so bad at acting and making excuses to cover and protect your identity that you put us both at risk. And he's like, what? I'm not bad at excuses. She informs him, one time you were gone for an hour and you didn't even try to make an excuse. Another time you were gone for two weeks and didn't even try to learn a single thing about the area you were pretending to be in. It's so careless. It scares me to think you're like that with everyone. Hell, I don't even have to think anymore. I got to see how bad you were at hiding it yesterday. Mark is dumbfounded by this. Like, where is this even coming from? Why didn't you tell me until now? 
and she says, I wanted to tell you outright, but I didn't feel safe telling you I knew. I figured if I just pushed you, you'd learn to make better excuses, but you didn't. Mark asks why she didn't feel safe telling him, and she says, because if your identity leaked because of your bad excuses and a bad guy spied on us, or you somehow let slip to him that I knew your identity all along, they might think I know your weaknesses too. I don't want to get kidnapped and tortured for info. Hell, even just the knowledge that I'm intimate with a superhero is dangerous. If your identity is leaked, the closer we look, the more likely it is that I'll get used as leverage. That's why I broke up with you the way I did. There must have been half a dozen people at that college with their phones out, recording the whole thing and thousands on the internet willing to analyze the footage. It's much better that when your identity inevitably gets leaked, that they think we don't like each other anymore and that I'm some dumb bitch who never even knew your identity. God only knows I'd have to be to buy your game plan, which was apparently to run off with zero excuse and then five seconds later, ooh, a superhero magically appears. And then you did it again when you left even though the pressure was off. Was it really more important to salvage your reputation with me than just to wait an extra 10 minutes first? Mark is dumbfounded. It's not that, what else could I have done? How about you plan your excuses beforehand so you could have actually thought out at the time to come back with some help rather than waiting until someone asked you to think of an excuse. Actually. You didn't even have to do that. When you left, you shouldn't have just disappeared. You should have screamed like a little girl and run off with your tail between your legs. And Mark is like, oh, come on, this is a joke. But she says, then our lives are a joke to you. It would have been simple, got you to a place to change the fastest and the most realistic action that would have blended you in with a crowd. The only downside is that you would have sacrificed your ego. Big deal. And Mark says, Amber, I don't know if this is a big deal. I mean, this sounds paranoid. Nobody's going to, says Mark before he gets cut off. She gets really heated now. Paranoid, not a big deal. You don't know what a big deal is. And Mark's like, yeah, I think I do. And they both start to raise their voices. And what do you know anyway? You're not a superhero. Well, I'd have loved to have introduced you to one. She says, tears welling up in her eyes, but I can't because his head was smashed so hard in the ground that I wasn't even allowed to see him again. And she bursts into tears. And Mark's like, stuttering you're like you what and she wipes the tears from her eyes and composes herself a bit more and she says darkwing was my dad yes the batman parody from the guardians of the globe who was killed by mark's father omni man in episode one this is the plot twist i was going for it's a cruel bit of irony that links elements of the plot together and depending on how you characterize darkwing it gives a lot of context for a paranoia I was inspired for this by like a, a very frequently written YouTube comment that goes along the lines of Omni-Man is the reason Batman doesn't trust the Justice League uh, slash has backup plans for everyone. So I was like, well, okay, what if Darkwing is similar, just not successful? He's already shown that he doesn't trust Omni-Man, so it makes sense that he'd bring his work home with him and Amber would learn from him about how important it is to be cautious as a superhero, which of course would all be compounded when he dies. So this is where Amber explains that her father wasn't like other superheroes. He was careful, very careful. He didn't trust anyone, not even the Guardians. She says he'd always stress to her about how to keep his identity safe and made sure that she knew how serious it was. But she confesses that this always scared her as a kid. That's why I liked comic books, she says. The heroes in them were optimistic and I didn't have to worry about them. So they made me feel like I didn't have to worry about him. But the Guardians were killed in their own secret HQ after an official emergency signal brought them there, so they were probably killed by someone they trusted. My dad was right to be paranoid, but even that wasn't enough. He always told me to stop reading those comics. He said that they gave you a false impression of hero work, and he was right. The least I could do is start taking it seriously. <laughs> I didn't even go to the funeral. I, I, I knew if he was alive he would have just said it was too risky. Instead, I took all of my comic books into a field and made them into a funeral pyre for him. Mark says now he understands why it was a big deal to her, but he can be better at it and they can work things out. But Amber says that she's too scared that his identity is going to be leaked after the events of yesterday. She says that it's better that they stay broken up anyway. If I'd have known you were a superhero, I never would have dated you. Mark asks why, and she says, when we started dating, you helped distract me from my dad's death. I thought I might just be okay, but then I worked out you were a superhero. I felt like you betrayed me. I didn't want what happened to my dad to happen to my boyfriend too. But by the time I worked it out, it was too late. She reaches to the side and pulls open a drawer, pulling out a comic book that's top half has been significantly burnt off and pulls it to her chest, puts her back to the wall and slides down it until she's sitting with her knees in front of her. No matter what I do, I can't stop loving superheroes. Mark tries to approach her, but she tells him to leave her alone. 
I can't lie to myself anymore that you're not going to die. I don't want to get back together, it'll just make the pain worse when it happens. And as in the show, Mark gives in and leaves. And there you go. To be honest, I don't think the logic for my Amber's choices are absolutely perfect. They are a little overreactive. It was hard to find like a good reason to have someone lie to a significant other like Amber does and be frustrated about them not getting it at the same time. Uh, but I realized I didn't have to make it a clear cut right or wrong. By giving her a paranoid outlook that links back into the big events in the story, I can neatly give her uh, at best a good point Mark hasn't considered, and at worst a character flaw that understandably led to her choices. And all without dropping that sweet sweet subversion. Or at least that was the idea. Tell me how I did. Thanks for watching. Uh, this was just kind of a quick video. I had an idea for it and I realized I could like bust it out while working on the next video, which is where I make Endgame Thanos as good as Infinity War Thanos. Uh, that's up next, so subscribe to that if you want to see it. Uh, otherwise, check out my other rewrites, buy a shirt, and if you think I did so good that you want to see what it's like when I make something original, check out my public domain story Airlock Bound and support us on Studio High C if you want to see it adapted into a public domain webcomic. Yes, you heard me right, there's public domain. As you can tell from someone who tries to fix media for a living, my stance on copyright is, fuck you.